Wanda. Hi, Jen. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Welcome to Wyoming. Thank you. Let's go for a walk. Okay, let's check it out. So Wanda, you've dedicated your entire life to study the ecology of this area. I have. I'm from Wyoming and I have a master's degree in rangeland ecology. Look at this area. It's just open grasslands, no trees. Tell me a little bit about it. It is the big wide open. We have very few trees here. We are high, 6,000 feet. We have 14 inches of recip a year and lots of wind. It's just really hard to get trees started here. Mm -hmm. So the native landscape is primarily grasses. And then we have a few forbs and some shrubs intermingled in that. Well, I'm really looking forward to working with you because I just got an email from a homeowner who could really use your expertise. Hi, John. Howdy. Welcome, Shaya. Thanks. Thanks for having us. This Hi, is John. Wanda. Hi. She's an ecologist. And I brought her along because of the email you wrote us, you know, how to take care of all this, all this land that you now have. Yeah, my wife and I moved out here uh, about six years ago from California. Um, and uh, we were living in, you know, kind of typical cookie cutter, close together type house, little neighborhood. And uh, um, we decided we wanted a little bit of space uh, between us and the neighbors. So. so this is a lot more land to take care of. Yeah, it sits on about nine acres. Mm -hmm. All right, so how typical is a plot like this? This is very common here. People move here for the lower population and the wide open landscape, but they're unfamiliar with it and it can be very overwhelming to suddenly have to manage a piece of ground of this size. All right, so let's go start exploring what you have and maybe you could help us with some tips on how to take care of it. Sure. Okay, yeah, so over here's the northeast corner of the property. The uh, owners prior to us had horses in here and there's a big corral that took up about a uh, half the width of the property here. And Wanda, what do you see here? I see things that are fairly typical of a horse property. This is alfalfa. It has the purple flower. It also has the tooth leaf. Um, this is not native, but it's a great plant. It's commonly found in horse hay. It roots very deeply and that captures nitrogen. So that is a bonus for your That's soil a bonus. here. bonus. Okay. Over here we have sweet clover. Super for pollinators, it also roots very deeply, and that is also a nitrogen capturing plant. Okay, so those are two positives for the area. What are negatives? Our negatives are right here. All of this is smooth brome. Okay. It's an invasive, and you can see it will choke out the native vegetation. I mean, it's pretty dominant in this whole it's area. It's already spreading. Mm -hmm. The other negative we have right here with the red leaf is this is cheat grass. It's also an invasive, can get fairly tall, and when it dries off, it's very flammable. So on windy days, one spark, this whole field could take off. One spark from anything, from a cigarette butt, from a dragging piece of equipment down the road, and it burns like crazy. Well, wow, so what kind of things can we do to get rid of it? There are selective liquid herbicides that can be sprayed on this, but it's way too windy today. So after you spray, a couple weeks later, you could come and reintroduce the natives. And then I think ultimately, it's gonna be easier for you to take care of in the long run. Yeah, sounds good. All right, so let's go to this part of the property and see what's over here. Okay. So John, when property owners have a large lot like this, I usually recommend that they start with a small piece and something visible from the house. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, the slider there on the other side of that, that's our dining room and kitchen, you know, we spend a lot of time in there and, and uh, so we're constantly looking out of those windows. So those are your main focal points and from a design perspective, the more you see something, the more you're gonna take care of it, you're gonna see its pro progression and follow it. Yeah, sure. So this area is a little bit different from the side yard. We have mainly native plants and no invasives. So we have some hairy golden aster here, some fringe sage, and a little bit of buffalo grass. So that's a good start for this area? That's a great start, but we do have a lot of bare ground or bald spots. So I think we should do a native seed mix of grasses and wildflowers, and we should just do this area back here. Well, how are we gonna go about seeding that? We have a machine for that. So homeowners can rent this seeder from our local conservation district. The conservation district is encouraging small acreage owners to reseed their areas to control our local weed problem. So it's fairly simple in its design. It drills a little uh, groove in the ground, the seed drops down in the groove, and then at the end of it, you have a chain 
that makes sure you have good soil seed contact. So when you make the grooves, it helps the seed deposit in that, and then you groom over the top so it doesn't blow away? Right, okay. because if you just spread it on the ground, it'll blow. Got it. Okay, so what are we planting here? We're going to plant four grasses and three wildflowers. And here's a couple of what we're going to do. This is prairie June grass. It blooms in June. It's bright green, little bunch grass. This is western wheat grass. This is a little bit later in the year. It has that bright blue leaf. Love and the, this texture. Yeah, it's great. It's grooved on both sides, so it's really drought resistant. Mm -hmm. And it has kind of a fan-shaped panicle to it. And this is our warm season grass for late in the summer. This is Blue Grandma, and it's called the eyelash grass. That is really beautiful. So we don't get a lot of precipitation here, and it's very windy. But the precipitation we do get often comes with snow. So snow can blow one to two miles before it evaporates. So we're going to use snow fence to slow the wind and make the snow drop out. So it will spread it evenly over the area we just seeded, and we should have good germination next spring. So as it starts to melt, it's just going to go into the soil? Instead of blowing away. Okay. And that's free irrigation. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't love free? Yeah, who doesn't love free? Exactly. So the plastic snow fence won't last very long in the wind. So we're going to give it some structural support by attaching it to livestock panels. We're going to pound in T-posts and stand up livestock panels and wire those together. And then across that, we'll attach the snow fence. We've chosen to site this on your west property line. The prevailing winds are out of the northwest. We'll capture snow on both sides and it will spread it out over the whole area. It's almost like you're making a sand dune out of snow. It's the same principle. Okay, so the snow fence is installed and it's ready to capture snow this winter. And what it's gonna do is blow through it and broadcast over all the seed that we just sliced into the soil. Come springtime, it's gonna go into the soil, free irrigation, and it's gonna help with the germination process. Awesome, I can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. I have one last piece of advice. Don't mow. Prairie grasses don't need to be mown. They'll only get to about 18 inches. You'll have plenty of color, plenty of texture. And if you mow, you'll be back to bare ground and back to weeds. So don't mow. Cool. Less mowing, less work. Sounds good to me. Excellent. Thanks for coming out to Wyoming. Appreciate all your help. Yeah, thanks for having thanks. us. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.